Today we find ourselves in the dark. And in the dark, we have trouble seeing. We're quite different from astronomers. They can see only in the dark. They know something we need to know, that what is real and true can be seen only in the dark. And we need to learn this. We are doubly blighted. Here, in this scene, we have too little light to see much of anything. And in the rest of our world, we have so much light that seeing is impossible. Astronomers call it light pollution. In North America and Europe, 99% of people live under sky glow. So astronomers head to the uninhabited regions of the world to be in the dark, where they can see. They are just like the contemplative monks and sisters of the last Christian millennium, who followed in the footsteps of the desert fathers and mothers of the first Christian millennium. These fathers and mothers fled the lights of Cairo, Alexandria, and Jerusalem for the deserts and caves of the Sinai and the Egyptian desert. They wanted to see what was real and true, namely God, God's own self. If we are to come to see what is real and true, we need to learn to see the way astronomers and contemplative monks and sisters see. First of all, they understand the light they are fleeing. It is the lighting of convenience, the lighting of streets, workplaces, and homes. This lighting, though convenient and a miracle by historical standards, in turn risks leading us too, to too much work, too much activity, too much distraction from what is real and true. The commercial lights of M Street, K Street, 14th Street, your street, and my street call us to read and believe, to buy and consume. But that light, offering less than it promises, may lead us away from deeper reality. Monks and sisters, desert fathers and mothers know that if they stay in this light, there will be little escaping the illusion this light conjures. We must recognize these temptations for what they are. Some of our greatest attributes, for example, can lead us not into generous service to the world, but rather into our own blindness. Our university degrees, our professional accomplishments, our monetary affluence, and our financial security. We might also acknowledge that the splintering of Christianity and the violence of Christian people to other Christians and non-Christians alike points to the profound blindness of the many who have called themselves Christian today as, as in the distant past. Watch Woody Allen's 1989 movie, Crimes and Misdemeanors. Martin Landau plays the superstar ophthalmologist who has his mistress killed because he is blind to anything but his personal success and any notion of morality. And he lives on stricken by the worry that the universe is indeed just, that he will be found out. Opposite him is Sam Waterston, playing the rabbi who loves God and who believes that God is just, though he is losing his eyesight. Late in the movie, we see him, now blind, dancing with great joy at his daughter's wedding. In our present darkness, we may be able to make out some tree leaves, branches, and bushes, and realize that there, in fact, is a light before us toward which we can walk. Perhaps we can descry the mother and child through the darkness, through the window, in the place that is light. In fact, we who know this garden, especially in the warm weather, will realize easily how much we are missing in all this darkness. The same for the spiritual life. The spiritual life is not something other than the world we live in. Rather, it is a deeper reality all around us with its own mystery and wonder. The scripture of the season tells us that those who walk in darkness have discovered a great light toward to which we can be attuned and discover a new hope and even joy. Let's let this light shine on us, we who live in the land of deep darkness. See how welcome even this little light is, so encouraging, so helpful. Lift high your heads, O gates, and let's enter to see the King of Glory.